Okay, so we're just doing a little bit of work uh, with looking at problem solving with combinations. And what you're going to notice here is that uh, we're going to start with a question where let's pretend in your pocket that you have a dime and a quarter. And the question asks how uh, you have the option of either pulling out no money whatsoever or some sum of money. Right? Okay, so write down this, the different sums that you could get, including the zero sum, which means that you don't pull out anything, um, and state how many sums there are. So I'll give you an example. So for the first one, the option of pulling out zero cents is one option. You could pull out just a dime. You could reach in and pull out just a quarter. Or you could reach in and pull out the dime and the quarter together, which is 35 cents. So in total, this is, there are four sums possible. Okay. Now, if you want, I would suggest that pause at this point and try it for a nickel, dime, and a quarter. I'll give you a hint that um, the zero cents one is the first option. And then we're going to go from there. So pause it. Try it for a nickel, dime, and a quarter, see how many sums you get. And then try it for the nickel, the dime, the quarter, the loony, see how many sums you get. And see if you can predict how many it would be if you had a nickel, a dime, quarter, loony, and a toonie. And then write down uh, this next part. So try and do that all on your own first, then come back and watch the video. So do that now. Okay, hopefully you paused it and you came back now. So we could have five cents, that's the nickel. We could have 10 cents, we could have 25 cents. Then we could have a nickel and a dime together, so 15 cents. We could have a nickel and a quarter together, so 30 cents. We could have a dime and a quarter together for 35 cents. We could have a dime, a nickel, and a quarter for 30 cents, a dime and a quarter for 35 cents. We could have all three together. So a quarter and a nickel is 30, so we could have 40 cents. There we go. There are eight possible sums. So we had four possible sums, eight possible sums. Uh, and the next one, again, you paused, but you're going to continue. So we're going to have all the same ones as before. So we're going to have all of these original ones. Because those are all possibilities. So there's eight of them. Then we can have a dollar five, a dollar ten. dollar and a quarter and then we could have a dollar five ten fifteen we could have a dollar twenty five oh we just did that one dollar thirty dollar thirty five dollar forty we got almost all of them now um, we could have oh just a dollar and we could have dollar forty, dollar thirty five, dollar thirty, dollar twenty five, dollar fifteen. That was the one I was missing from above. And this now has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen sums. Now hopefully you see a little pattern occurring. Okay. Can you predict without listing if I had a nickel, a dime, quarter, loony, and a toonie now? how many possible sums there would be. You don't want to list all these out, but if you look at the pattern, you might see, hey, there were four sums. So there were two options for the dime. You could either have the dime or not have the dime, have the quarter and not have the quarter. Uh, so that would give us four, so two times two is four. You could have the nickel, the nickel or not have the nickel. You can have the dime or not have the dime. You can have the quarter or not have the quarter. So two times two times two is uh, two times two is four times two is eight. 
sums. You could have the nickel or not have the nickel. You could have the dime or not have the dime. You could have the quarter or not have the quarter. You could have the loonie or not have the loonie or have not, none of them. And basically, that if we look at it, that tree diagram, that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. So in this case, you may have come to the realization that you could have 3, 4, 5, or 2 to the 5, which is 32 possible sums of money. So you might have come to that on your own without thinking of it as this multiplication of options, but uh, nonetheless, hopefully you, you did that. All right, now it says, for parts A through D, write down the number of sums possible if the null set, null set is not allowed. So meaning that you're not allowed to reach into your pocket and pull out zero sum. So you have to pull out at least one coin. So the answer for A is 3. For B is 8 minus 1, which is 7. For C, it's 16 minus 1, which is 15. And for D, it's 32 minus 1, which is 31. Okay. Well, what does this look like? Well, what this comes down to is the total number of subsets of a set is really what we're talking about here. And so it's a big word, but really what it's telling us is the number of subsets within the big set. So it says, when you can choose from 0 to n elements, the total number of subsets of a set of n elements is, and choose 0, and choose 1, plus, plus, all the way to the last one. So, for instance, up here, we could have had, uh, I'll use this one here, the nickel. So you could, there are 1, 2, 3, 4 options. So we could say, well, there's 4 objects, we could choose none of them. 4 choose 0 is 1, so there's one way of choosing nothing. That's the null set. Then you could say, well, 4 choose 1. Well, I could pick the nickel, I could pick the dime, the quarter, or the loony. Well, there's four ways to do that. 4 choose 1 is 4. I could pick the nickel, the dime, the quarter, or the loony right here. So those are the 1, 2, 3, and 4. So those are the four options from that. And the n choose 0 option is this one. So there are four. And then you would keep doing that. And you would get to your solution of 32 for this one. Because the last one would be, hey, if I have 4 choose 4, well, that's just the dollar forty option. That's the 4 choose 4 option. That's the 4 choose 4 option. OK. Now, here's the thing. Uh, if there are just one item. Okay, it's just one object if, of each type. Then basically the solution comes down to you can either choose the item or not choose the item for each possibility. So up here we're doing a summation of options. So you know, n cho four choose zero for the one above, four choose one, four choose two, four choose three, four choose four. But we could look at this differently and just say, well, you could pick the nickel or not pick the nickel. You could pick the dime or not pick the dime. You could pick the quarter or not pick the quarter. You could pick the loony or not pick the loony. And if you branched it out in those options, you would see that you would end up with um, 2 to the power of 4, or sorry, 2 to the power of 5, which was 32. Or if we have n number of elements, it would be 2 to the power of n. Let's take a look at this as an example and see if it helps out just a little bit. Okay, so it says, let's look at this nickel, dime, quarter, loony, and toony situation with this definition. So, there are one, two, three, four, five options. Okay, so we, we see that there's five options, so we could say five choose zero, plus five choose one, plus five choose two, plus five choose three, plus five choose four, plus five choose five. 5 choose 5 is 1, sorry, 5 choose 5 is 1, 5 choose 0 is 1, 5 choose 5 is just 5. Um, if you're picking 4 of them, well, there's only 5 ways of doing that. 5 choose 2, there's 10. 5 choose 3 is also 10. And that's 20, 32. 32 possibilities. The other way to do it is say, I could pick the nickel or not pick the nickel. Pick the, qu the dime or not pick the dime. Pick the quarter or not pick the quarter. Pick the loony or not pick the loony. Pick the toony or not pick the toony. 2 to the power of 5, which is equal to 32. The same solution. 
So, you know, and if you wanted to list the sums, this is the zero dollar sum. This is the dollar, sorry, two, three. This is the three dollars and forty cent option. The five choose five is three dollars and forty cents. This is the zero. The five choose one is just the nickel, the dime, the quarter, the loony, and the toony. Those are the five choices. The five choose four is you pick this one, 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 that one, that one, and you see that there's just five ways of doing that. So the sums, you could list the sums underneath there for each of these options. So there's this way of thinking about it, where you've got the pick it or don't pick it, 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 and those five options. Or you can look at it as a summation of the options like that. Okay, so let's pretend that you go for dinner and you're going to buy a, uh, a fruit bowl. Now the fruit bowl contains apples, pineapples, grapes, or strawberries. So you can have apples, pineapples, grapes, or strawberries in it. How many different combinations of fruit can be made for the dessert? Show using two methods, all right? So draw a line. And you might want to try this, you might want to pause it and give it a shot yourself. Um, and in this case, we are going to uh, disregard, disregard the null set, because we have to pick something, right? We want to pick something. So there are four options, so we know that n equals four in this case, and so the number of combinations that we can have equals two to the n, subtract one. Now we're subtracting one because we're getting rid of the null set. We're saying, hey, get out that option of don't pick any of them. And that's two to the power of four minus one. Two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16. 16 minus one is, there are 15 options, or 15, sorry, combinations. Another way of doing that is we go, we have four choices, we're gonna choose one. Four choose two, four choose three. So in this one, maybe a little more intuitive, I have four of them, I can pick any, just one of them. So I can pick just the apples, just the pineapples, just the grapes, or just the strawberries. Well, there's four ways of doing that. Notice I left out that other one, the four choose zero, because I said we don't want the null set. We're gonna leave it out. So I'm not doing the, the four choose zero option. Four choose four, well, there's only one way I can grab all of them like that. Now four choose two and uh, four choose three are the next set. Now four choose three is just four because there are four ways to take three at a time. And then the four choose, uh, what's the next one? Four choose two is six. And you'll notice there's a pattern emerging. From up here, it was one, five, 10, 10, five, one. Here it's one, four, six, four, one. And so we're gonna learn about that later. Now obviously this one's missing the one at the front because that's the null set. Now if you look at this, this is 10, 15 combinations. Same answer. I actually like this way because it, it's very meaningful and it gives you the idea of what the actual combinations are that you're producing. Uh, and this one's just a, a quick way of getting to that solution. Okay, let's try some other questions here. So imagine you have a delegation of three people and it's chosen, uh, oh, sorry, chosen from a group of volunteers consisting of four lawyers, a city councillor, and three retail merchants. How many ways can this group be formed if at least one rate retailer must be on the delegation? So to help organize this, so it's a delegate of three from four lawyers, one counselor, and three retail merchants. So we're going to use the direct method in this first one. The first one we'll do is direct. Okay. Case one. So we're going to look at case one at this point. Case one says we have three retail merchants, and what does it say here? It has to have at least uh, at least one retailer. So there's the one retailer. 
there's five other people to pick from, the four lawyers and the city councilors, so they're together are five. And since we're picking a group of three, we can only put two of them on it. That's three times 10, which is 30. So this is the case where exactly one retail merchant. Case two is we have two of them on it. So again, there's only one left to pick from those other ones. So it's three times five. And this is exactly two. Case three says three choose three, five choose zero. Three choose three is one, five choose five is zero is one. So it's only one way to get exactly three of them. And we could have just seen that. There's only three retailers, so there's only one way to put all three of them on there. So the total number is 30 plus 15 plus 1, which is 46, have at least one retailer. Okay. It's not too long to do it that way because it's small numbers. But let's flip it over and see the indirect method. So this way is indirect. And we've done direct and indirect before, so this is really just a very small um, extension of that. Okay, so looking at this, um, we're going to say when there's no retail merchants. So when there's no retail merchants, that's 3 choose 0, 5 choose 3, which is 1 times 10, which equals 10. And then the total number of combinations is 8. There's 8 people. Just pick 3 of them with no regard whatsoever of having to have a certain number of people in there. And that's 56. So it's the total minus no retailers. So it's 56 less 10 because every other option will include them. And that's 46, which is the same answer. So some people might like that way better. The indirect method is very useful in a lot of instances. Uh, in this case, it's, you know, it's, it's quite a bit easier. You'll see. OK. Uh, number three, and I'll just start this one off for you, and then you can finish it and start your work on the questions uh, that are posted on the website uh, in the two different packages. One's an assignment, and one is your regular work. In the game of hearts, the entire deck of cards is dealt. If you have a hand, so you're basically getting 13 cards. In how many ways could that hand contain? A, at least two hearts. So if it has at least two hearts, then what I would say is... There's 13 uh, cards, and there are 13 hearts in the deck. So you're going to pick none of them. And there's 39 cards left, and we're going to pick 13. So the total number of ways of doing that is, well, we'll get that number in just a minute. And that's actually just one times, and then we'll figure out what that is in a second. The other option is you could have one heart in your hand and that means that uh, you would then have 12 these left like so and 13 times so now 39 choose 13 is a massive number okay and so it's a really big number and we'll so we're gonna put this in our calculator after and then what we would do from there is to find the answer, we would take the total and subtract when there's none and subtract when there's one. So the total is, there's 52 cards in the deck. How many combinations of 13 cards can you get? Minus 13 choose zero, like that. So minus when there is, when there are no hearts minus when there is one heart. 
I'll leave it up to you to put that in your calculator and come up with a solution. And then you're going to see, you know, uh, for part B, it says how many ways are there where there's at least 10 hearts. So you're not going to do the indirect method here and say, um, you know, oh, I'm going to subtract when there's no hearts, when there's one heart, when there's two hearts, when there's three hearts, when there's four hearts, when there's five hearts, when there's six hearts, when there's seven hearts, when there's eight hearts, when there's nine hearts, and when there's ten, uh, sorry, when there's nine hearts, and then subtract from the total. So in this one, you could actually just do it directly. So this is using indirect, the first one. This is just easier. And the direct method is probably faster for this one, where you say, oh, okay, 13 hearts, I'm going to choose 10 of them. 39 cards left, I only have 3 left to choose. 13 hearts, choose 11. Thirteen, choose twelve. Oh, what am I doing? One. Like that. So that's when there's ten hearts. When there's eleven hearts. When there's twelve hearts. That's supposed to be a heart. And when there's thirteen hearts and you just add them up to get the total. You don't want to do the indirect method here because the indirect method would require you to subtract, like I said, from nine hearts all the way down to zero hearts, and that would just take too long. All right, and part C says, um, you know, five of clubs and five of spades. And so, you know, you just have to basically look at um, if it has a five of clubs and the five of spades, then for that one, you know, there's one option. Oh, because this is five of clubs and the five of spades. So you have one five of clubs, you're picking it. You have one five of spades, you're picking it. You have 50 cards left in the deck, and you only have 11 more to pick, right? So that's this is the um, five of clubs, and this is the five of spades. That was hard to draw. And these are the others. Okay, for D, and again, you can find that number. For D, it says five, uh, three diamonds. So I'm going to let you figure out D, and I'm going to let you also try letter E, where you have five clubs and five spades. Remembering that there are uh, 13, well, if the three diamonds, I mean, if you want to, if they have to have three diamonds, that's actually a little bit easier than the other ones, because there's 13 diamonds in the deck, you have to have three of them. There are... 39 cards left that aren't diamonds, and you just have to pick 10 of them, which you probably would have done on your own anyways. For this one, the five clubs, well, there's, there's 13 clubs in the deck. You need five of them. There are 13 spades in the deck, and you need five of them, which means there's 26 cards left in the deck to add up to 52. And then, since I'm at 10 and... then I got to get to 13, so I would just pick the last three. Right, so that's going to add up to 52, and that should add up to 13, because we were, we're dealing out 13 cards. Okay, I didn't put any numbers in there. You can use your calculator to find all those numbers. Some of them are pretty big, so hence why I left them out. All right, hope this helps. That's problem solving using combinations. So some of it is looking at... Um, you know, when you can choose or not choose, and then there are some other problems that involve combinations as they are.